Welcome. So what I have here is 1 plus sine of theta divided by cosine of theta plus cosine of theta divided by 1 plus sine of theta equals 2 secant of theta. And what we want to do is we want to verify that these two are the same. And when you know, by initial kind of look, you're like, there ain't no way those are the same. That's, that's like crazy talk, right? But what we're going to do is we're just going to try to make this very simplistic as possible. So we want to pick one side, and we want to pick the side that's going to be the most complicated. So you look at here and we'll say, all right, I'm pretty sure I'm going to say this is more complicated than this over here. Um, then I'm going to want to use my trigonometric identities. Well, there's really not too many trigonometric identities I could use with where I'm at right now. I just have sines and cosines. So as far as trigonometric identities off the start, I really can't apply anything. Um, looking ahead, not really going to get to me right now. Converting to sines and cosines. The left side already is converted to sines and cosines. The one thing I could do is try to convert my cosines to secants, but then I'm still left with sines, which I need to get rid of. Now I have apply operations. So when I'm talking about apply operations, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, if your one side you're trying to simplify is asking you to do an operation that's not on your other side, you're going to want to apply that operation. Therefore, then you can combine them so it looks like the other side of the um, trigonometric I, um, equation that you're trying to uh, verify. So you can see here I have to add. Now, by adding, that means I have to have common denominators. And that's why a lot of students don't like fractions, because it's just an added step that you have to do. So to find the common denominator between cosine of theta and 1 plus sine of theta, well, it's not apparently obvious what the um, common denominator is. But if I know I want to get at least a common denominator, I want to make sure that I can just multiply them across to each other, right? Because if numbers, you know, you. It didn't always provide the least common denominator, but if you took both your denominators and multiplied them, then you know that both those numbers are going to divide into your new uh, denominator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by my other denominator on both sides. And so this one I need to multiply by the cosine of theta on both sides. Okay. So up top, what I have is a perfect square. I have the same binomial multiplied by itself. So therefore, that's going to give me with 1 squared plus 2 sine of theta um, plus sine squared of theta all over 1 plus sine of theta times cosine of theta. Now, I could distribute that through, but I'm going to leave it because I know there's going to have to be some uh, simplifying. I'm going to have to divide out to, uh, to get 1 here. So I'm going to kind of want to hope some of these uh, are going to happen. Plus, I have cosine squared divided by 1 plus sine of theta times cosine of theta. All right? Well, now since I have them in the same denominator, I can combine my like terms here. So I'll have 1 plus 2 sine of theta plus sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta, all divided by 1 plus sine of theta times cosine of theta. OK, so let's go back through now. So we have planned our operations, and we did something, right? Let's kind of go back up there. So we're still working on one side, working on the most complicated side. But now we have some trigonometric identities that we can apply, because we have sine squared and cosine squared. And we always want to use our uh, Pythagorean identities when possible. So the Pythagorean idea says, if you have sine squared plus cosine squared, that equals 1. So what we notice right here, that's now equal to 1. Um, then, uh, OK, so therefore, that's going to equal to 1. So now I'm going to have 2 plus 2 sine of theta, 2 plus 2 sine of theta, divided by 1 plus sine of theta times cosine of theta. All right? So now we just need to simplify, OK. I know I need to keep cosine on the denominator because I need to get secant. And the reciprocal of secant is 1 over cosine. But I need to get rid of this 1 plus sine of theta. Well, if I factor out a 2, what I'm left with is 2 times 1 plus sine of theta divided by 1 plus sine of theta times cosine of theta, which now these two are going to divide out to 1. Leave me with 2 over cosine of theta, which can be written as 2 times secant of theta. So, and then we look at our left side and we say, is that the same as our right side? And yes, it is. So, therefore, our equation has been verified. Thanks.